What's going on guys and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. These ones start off fun and then they get really deep, so buckle up. Here are the top 10 biological mysteries that can't be explained. Let's dive in. Kicking off the list at number 10, laughing. Some of these lists are pretty messed up. We got chemicals that can melt your skin off, demon photos, haunted islands, you name it. I try and use humor whenever I can. Making people laugh is my favorite thing. Laughing is great and all, but do we even know why we do it? We pay to go watch movies or stand up comedy or improv to laugh. Most people will ask for their money back because they didn't laugh. It's the weirdest thing. Laughter isn't uniquely human. Rats also laugh when they're tickled, which is a fact I didn't want to know, but now since I do, you have to as well, courtesy of clicking my face. So far, we believe that laughing is done to promote pro-social behavior. Like when you're play fighting your siblings, you keep it light, you laugh, you don't just stare at them and aggressively, you know. It's also thought that humans evolve differently and they use laughter in different ways after our evolutionary split with other species. So next time you laugh at a joke, just wait a beat and then ask the group why they thought that was funny and start taking some notes, you know, really mix it up. Number nine itching. Okay, let's see if you can go this entire video without scratching yourself. Being itchy is the worst. My skin gets so dry in the winter, I look like a madman most of the time. Sometimes you feel an itch and it's a tiny bug and your arm hairs pick it up and your brain tells you something's afoot. But sometimes it's literally nothing. Nothing is on your skin, you're scratching, you're like, what is, why? There's nothing here. You ever get somebody to scratch a specific part on your back? There is no better feeling on the planet. Itches and pain also go hand to hand. Scratching offers relief to an itch because scratching causes pain. Pain blocks out the itch, but some painkillers also cause you to be itchy. So our brains are like, I don't really know what I want. It's, we don't know yet. I'm itching to know the real purpose here. It sounds like we've barely scratched the surface. Yeah, I'll, I have like four more. Number eight, hiccups. Hiccups are the absolute worst. Not only are they wildly uncomfortable, but they're also annoying. Even if you're by yourself and you get the hiccups, you still get embarrassed. You're like, oh, I hope no one can hear me. This is horrible. But why do we do this? How do we cure them? Make it stop, please. The way we handle hiccups still feels like the middle ages. It's almost like it's a joke. It's like, yeah, hold your breath, maybe drink water upside down. Um, can I try scaring you? Maybe that'll work. Like, what? The only treatments for severe cases involve sedation and nerve stimulation. Nothing you can do nor want to do in the middle of math class. You just gotta deal with it. These involuntary diaphragm contractions cause your vocal cords to close and open briefly, which results in you sounding like a complete idiot. Like, <gasps> Sorry, we're good. Number seven, yawning. You ever yawn and then a little saliva shoots out of your mouth? Like you're a snake, like you're a sneaky snake all of a sudden? That's called gleeking. It'll catch you off guard. It's a little weird, but that's just your salivary glands doing their thing. The actual yawn itself, we don't totally understand to this day. We yawn when we're tired, but we also yawn the moment we wake up. What's going on up here? Also, why does seeing somebody else yawn make you want to yawn? Guy divers say they often yawn right before jumping, so it doesn't belong to the I'm tired category. Know what I'm saying? The purpose of a yawn remains a mystery. We used to think that yawning was our way of taking in large amounts of air to increase oxygen in our blood. But after a number of experiments done in 1987, that hypothesis was thrown aside. Also, I kept track of how many times I yawned while reading about this thing. Four times. Four times while typing this, I yawned. The brain's weird. Number six, immortal jellyfish. Creatures like the immortal jellyfish could be the key to advancing human life. Some people want to be Spider-Man, I would take immortality any day. It was said over 4,000 years ago to Gilgamesh that the secret to immortality lies in the coral reef on the ocean floor. And come 1988, German marine biologist Christian Sommer found it. It wasn't the trident of Poseidon, but instead, off the cliffs of Portofino, he discovered Teratopsis dorni, aka the immortal jellyfish. This is the Benjamin Button of the sea, okay? This guy was studying this creature and it literally started to age backwards in front of him. It was reversing the life cycle in front of his very eyes. They start off in their larval form, mature into polyps, which bud off into these tiny jellyfish. That's their life cycle. A jellyfish is usually the end of the life cycle. So one species of jellyfish has somehow changed that entire cycle, the immortal jellyfish, which is smaller than your fingernail, by the way, which I'll explain. It just shrinks itself over and over. It reabsorbs its tentacles, then having lost the ability to swim now, it sinks back to the ocean floor and then begins as a blob all over again. And for the next 40 hours, the blob develops into a new polyp and then its cycle starts back over and over. And then this thing just comes and dies and gets smaller and comes back again. Can we do this? I kind of don't want to, but I kind of do. Number Five blue whales. The largest animal to ever live on Earth, coming in at around 330,000 pounds, give or take. The blue whale is hard to miss, but even so, scientists have found it incredibly difficult to observe slash describe their sex life. Blue whales usually travel solo, but come late July, early August, they begin to pair up. They don't just mate on the spot, and then, you know, Bob's your uncle. Blue whales almost date for a while. Richard Sears, marine researcher, says that they'll travel for weeks, with mating not being a foregone conclusion. We still have no idea how females 
choose a mate also. Sometimes another male will just join in and then they'll almost race each other in the water to see who's the fastest. That's definitely an option. There's also another theory that blue whale vocalizations have some sort of reproductive function. So you gotta spit that game, even in the ocean. Number four, hammerhead sharks. We haven't acknowledged how insane hammerhead sharks look. I mean, like really look at this thing. Why is its head a hammer? They look like sea vacuums. This is insane. There are nine species of hammerhead sharks. Their name, coming from the Greek word of hammer, sphyma. Most sharks have a pointed head, right? They're aerodynamic, but not this guy. Dude's poking his eyes out all day long. Also, in case you're wondering, when they're born, their heads are round. They have to mature into their hammer eyes situation. That must be a pretty wild time. Imagine your eyes just slowly drifting apart as you grow up, like a sloth. I'd be so concerned. They're also one of the only creatures in the animal kingdom that can get a tan from sun exposure. Hashtag tan lines. The most compelling theory so far about the hammerhead shark is that it evolved to increase its electrosensory area. Kind of like how my neck evolved to let me see over people at concerts. Nature finds a way. Number three, homing. This one I've wondered since I was a wee young lad. You see birds flying overhead, they're in a flying V, they're heading south for the winter. The approaching cold weather motivates them, but really it's the food supply around them that determines when moving day really is. That's pretty normal in the animal world. That's natural instincts. But we still can't figure out homing exactly. See, homing is the ability to, well, navigate navigate home, all the while traveling through unfamiliar landscapes. Homing pigeons were used in both world wars, with several being awarded medals for their service. A pigeon got a medal. Oh, it's poor neck. It would have been so heavy. A little different than the pigeons we have in our city today. They're just fat and covered in mayonnaise. We still don't know exactly how homing pigeons navigate these thousand mile trips. If you have ornithophobia, odds are it's probably because of a pigeon. They're always watching. Number two, deja vu. There's a couple theories for this one, so let's just dive in. The hologram theory is fun. Basically, it's that our memories are stored in the brain like holograms, literally like the movie Inside Out. And that's pretty close. Just these pockets of information that are floating in our subconscious, and just one small fragment is needed to remember an entire event. Just like a keyword that unlocks memory. Sometimes this sneaks up on you when you're experiencing something entirely new. You may see something or smell something that feels familiar and that's when the have I done this before feeling comes out. You fail to recognize the trigger word that spawns that sense of familiarity but deep down your brain still knows. Leaving you feeling like you're having a premonition and all your friends are in danger. You're like I think this has happened before. Nobody move. There's also divided attention theory. This happens when all of our attention is on one specific thing. Maybe you're at a Beyonce concert and you're like wow she's 40. Can you believe that? Your focus is on the stage but your brain is subliminally processing your surroundings and the girl dancing off beat in the next section. So later on after the show, she's on the same train as you heading home, but you don't realize it. You have this sense of familiarity, but you don't know why. It's because offbeat Becky was triggered in your brain sitting over here. We still haven't figured out deja vu entirely. Like I said, these are just theories. Deja vu is so weird. Honestly, I think I'm getting it right now. I feel like you're about to hit the thumbs up. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah. And number one, crying. Okay, we'll save the tearjerker for last. A good amount of scientists believe that crying, like emotional crying, like sadness, was a way for our ancestors to communicate sadness at a close distance without being vocal, right? You know how some people say they can cry on demand? Well, that's the exact idea. To signal, right? Many believe this was the start of humans developing emotions. Now in the Middle Ages, crying was quite risky. You let a few teardrops and they fell from your left eye while the whole town would think that you were a witch because witches can only shed three tears from their left eye. It's also been proven that crying expels toxins, but the exact reason why we feel like crying during a sad movie, well, that still remains a mystery. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Those were the top 10 biological mysteries that can't be explained. I'm Taylor McWaters, and we'll see you next time on Most Amazing Top 10. Peace.